Hey what's up guys welcome back to Mr3D. So in this video we are going to take a look at a new real time fluid simulation add-on known as self fluids. It's all powered by simulation nodes. Self fluids takes simulations in blender to a whole new level providing simplicity and performance. Unlike Blender's default fluid simulation, which can be challenging to master and often requires a significant processing time, Self Fluids simplifies the process for a more user-friendly and efficient experience. So if you would like to get Self Fluids, you can simply go over to the link in the description. From there, you can get it. You can also read more about its features and limitations. So without any further ado, let's jump into Blender. Now go over to Edit, Preferences, Install the Self Fluids add-on that you have downloaded from Blender Market. Then press N on your keyboard and here you will see a new Self Fluids panel. Click on it and here you got a few options. So first of all we are gonna click on New Fluid and here you can see that we have a domain and you can increase or decrease the domain size depending on how big simulation you want. Domain size does not affect the simulation quality. Then you have the height of the domain size and this is where this add-on gets interesting. So every object in the initial collection will add one time fluid at the beginning of the timeline and every object in inflow will add fluid continuously throughout the timeline and all the objects in the outflow collection will remove fluid continuously throughout the timeline. Then we have the ground and the effector collection as well. And here you got some extra settings which we'll talk about later but now let's look at the fluid settings. Let's say here I have a cube. If I move it up right here and add an initial collection, move that cube to that initial fluid collection and if you play back your timeline, you can see that we have one time fluid right here. Now if you increase the size of the cube, the fluid amount will also increase. And to better grasp how good this looks, you can go over to the material preview and uh, play it yourself. Now let's talk about some extra settings. So here we have time scale. So if I move this down, let me just increase the end frame on my timeline and then I'm gonna play this down. You can see that the simulation slows, which makes us feel that it's a, a very big area. Then you have post displacement, which is the displacement of the fluid. And here you can see. Point 0.15 looks better. Then you have the extra noise in the water which adds a bit more realism and then we have extra foam. Of course you can fill the sides and you can fill the bottom as well. And we cannot see through the bottom right now but in some cases this should work. Now that you know what all these settings do, let's move on to fluid section again. So now we have this uh, initial fluid here. If I move the cube in the inflow collection right here you can see that it starts adding fluid in the scene continuously. And now if I add a new cube, increase the size, make a new outflow collection, put the new cube in the outflow collection, you can see that it starts to remove fluid. And here you can see how this reacts and creates a realistic simulation. And you saw how easy it is to create this with self fluids. If you were to use Blender's default simulation, you would have to wait hours on baking and then hours on finding the best settings and still you wouldn't get what you want. If you have a low end PC, then this is something you should really use. Of course, there is no way to increase the quality of this simulation right now, but I think in the future it will be possible. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove the inflow object from the collection and decrease the size of the outflow. And now you can see how the outflow reacts with the liquid. And you can see how realistic this looks. Now let's go ahead and see how a factor works. So if I just disable the outflow, just like that, and now I'm going to add a new cube in the scene, place it right here, scale it like so. Then I'm going to click on this plus icon to create a new effector collection. And I'm going to move that cube in the effector collection. 
Simple. What I'm gonna do is set up effector modifiers. So every time you add a new effector in the effectors collection, you have to click this button to make that object react to the simulation. So now that I have clicked it, you can see that we got a new cell fluids effector geometry nodes modifier. And now if I click on right here and just do like so, you can see how this is affecting the fluid. Now if I move this up and down, you can see the waves it's creating. So you can do all sorts of stuff with this. All you have to do is imagine what you want to create. As of now, you cannot create droplets or splashes and some other things, but those will be definitely available in the future. Of course, you can add a ground. Now that you know how this works, let's talk about cell fluids tools. So here you have bake flow map. You can do that for rivers, which is realistic. Like it does not require any processing time. And of course you can change render settings. So the cell fluids add-on also comes with three demo scenes that you can use and see the quality of the simulation. And there you have it. The self fluid add-on using simulation nodes is a game changer for fluid simulations in Blender. Whether you are a beginner looking to create quick fluid simulations with ease or an experienced artist wanting a fast physics based simulation, this add-on has you covered. Also you can check some of my previous videos and of course don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and share this video with your fellow Blender artists. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.